Okay, let's take a look at the clutch assembly. So this top side view here, we see the transmission housing, the bell housing. We see our clutch cover, our flywheel right here. So the ring gear where our starter would engage. Our clutch cover is bolted directly to our flywheel. What we can see in this small little square right here, that is our intermediate plate and that's also available to see right here. So obviously we're not used to seeing them from a vertical view like this. Well, and that's because this is a cutaway and it makes it easier for us to see. So flywheel, intermediate plate, clutch cover. The clutch cover is also holding, supporting, and really allowing the pressure springs that are in here, the angled pressure springs, to apply against the release levers and push the pressure plate against the clutch discs, the intermediate plate, and the flywheel. And what we see is right now, the entire clutch rotates as a giant assembly. So it's heavy cast. This is where balance becomes an issue. And so they wanna make sure they've balanced the housing. And that's why we see these holes have been drilled in to fix the balance of the clutch cover. We wanna make sure that all the weight rotating of this clutch assembly is concentric or centered to the axis or rotation of the engine. Most of you are used to seeing this view. This would be the only view you would get of this unit, and that would be through the inspection cover on the bottom of the bell housing, and you would be looking for that adjusting bolt that's right there and the grease circ that's right there. So it'd be your normal service points that you're used to looking at. So again, if we take a look at the top view, we can see our bell housing, our cover, intermediate plate to the flywheel, pressure plate squeezing everything together. What we can also see right here is our release yoke and that's going to be attached to our linkage that's right here and if I sort of just take us a look we can see the mechanical leverage that's happening. So we can see the long lever length pulling against through our adjusting rod, our push rod travel coming in to our adjustment, our return spring bringing our pedal back up against the firewall there. So if we're talking about free pedal, free pedal would be this measurement that we'll see right here, would be the light movement that my foot can do with very little effort before my release levers or my uh, fork, my release fork is gonna make contact with my release bearing. So what that looks like here on the bottom is if I do that same thing, you'll see that slight movement between the release fork and my release bearing before it starts to pull the sleeve away. And so we'll take a look at what that looks like here in a cutaway diagram. We can see in the cutaway diagram where that release levers would be, the release bearing right there, and that free play that it's talking about right here for that eighth of an inch. Now the free play is the same as free pedal. The only difference is free pedal is measured at the pedal and free play is measured at our fork to our release bearing. So again, if we go back to the top side view, what's important to differentiate is what's moving and when. And so what we should see is anything that is bolted directly to the flywheel is gonna rotate at engine speed. And so I'm just gonna take one of these cameras here, move it over so we can see this a little bit better as to what exactly is happening. What we can see here is that my flywheel is bolted to my cover. My cover supports my pressure plate and my intermediate plate is actually held in place because it's fit in to the clutch cover. It's supposed to float in there. It's supposed to move in there easily and that's something we wanna look for to make sure it does move back and forth. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is we're gonna drag on one of our clutch discs. So what we'll see is that when my pedal is off the clutch, so my clutch is applied, my pedal is disengaged. What's going to happen is everything rotates as one unit. When I actually put my clutch pedal in, what happens is that my release bearing is now being pulled away 
and my pressure plate is lifted off, pulled away from my flywheel, and that's why we call it a pull type clutch is because my release bearing is pulled away and my pressure plate is pulled away from my flywheel. And now what we see here is that my clutch discs are able to move and if I rotate this unit we see that the discs are stationary. My flywheel, my clutch cover and my intermediate plate all rotate at engine speed while my discs and therefore my input shaft to my transmission because the discs are splined to the input shaft stay stationary. So they're not moving until I release the pedal, engage the clutch, and now everything rotates as one large unit. When we talk about the adjustment, what we would be looking for, the module talks about a half an inch and an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch, and most of the service manuals would tell you the exact same measurement. There's multiple different tools that a person can use. Some of them are quite specialized from a manufacturer. Some of them are not that specialized and the ones I use are not that specialized. So we can see manufacturers make very specific uh, forks, almost looks like a tuning fork, that you'd be able to take the measurements with or you'd be able to look and see. And so there'd be one that's got an eighth of an inch one that's slightly larger than an eighth of an inch depending on the specification and then it's got about a three eighths and a half an inch ball. Now most of you do not have those specialty tools. You'd have something that looks more like this. You got an eighth of an inch flat bar and you got a half an inch key stock. And when we actually look for our adjustment, what we're looking at are two things. The first one we actually want to set is we want to take a look and make sure if I move this down, you can see the little light shining through. We want to see that when we adjust the clutch and we'd usually do this from the underside. So I'll do the same thing so you can see and, and see what you'd be doing. So you usually take your half inch measure, you run it in your inspection and I'm doing this like orthoscopically here uh, so I can see only through the camera. I'm not climbing underneath there. So if I fumble around to get a bit, that's why and I'm hooking up on the camera, which is a problem. That's why I'm bumping it. So we'd want to adjust it then when we release that this half inch spacer is fairly snug. So what we can see is that this is too loose. And if I were to apply this clutch pedal all the way to the floor, what we'll notice is that I'm not actually going to be squeezing that clutch brake. And if I don't squeeze the clutch brake, I will have a hard or a customer complaint of, won't go into first or reverse because the input shaft will continue to rotate at engine speed and we won't be able to match speeds. If you remember from your fuller transmission, we do not have a synchronizer going into first and reverse. And if we look at the eighth of an inch, again, that's going to come in with our measuring tool right here. And where we're going to look for that is to fit between our release bearing and our lever right in there. So this one might actually require me to get over there and take a look and get a better better view to coordinate this in because this can be somewhat snug what we would set first is we'd set the half inch first and then we would worry about setting the eighth of an inch so when we look at this let's see if hopefully you can keep seeing what's happening here get the flashlight we want to be able to get this eighth inch bar jammed up in there and so what i can see is that i can't do that, which makes sense, really. So we are out of adjustment. We would aim to restore our half inch gap, and then we would check to see that the clutch brake operates properly. And then also the last thing we would check is to make sure that our, our free play here is set correct to the eighth of an inch. Now, if the vehicle was left and no one's ever changed or modified the linkages, if you restore your half inch and the clutch is in adjustment, as in it's not wore out, you will not have to change the linkage to get your eighth inch back. The only time you're gonna get, have to modify is if somebody has changed that linkage already. If you're just restoring and doing the adjustment, you should just be setting the half an inch and checking the eighth of an inch. Now. To do the adjustment, what you would do is have somebody operate the clutch pedal so that the spring is being caged. And if I sort of just take a look here 
As they're applying the clutch pedal, hopefully we can see what I'm doing. You can see that bolt that's got the yellow ring around it. That's just because it's brand new and it's looking pretty. That's going to be gone really quick in normal life. What you would do is you'd have somebody apply the clutch. You'd put your 5 8 socket on your ratchet, push that in and turn it. And we'll talk about the direction of rotation, but you'd be turning the adjusting ring and you're aiming to turn that adjusting ring towards the flywheel. And so what we'd be aiming to do is from this view right here, well, it depends on how you're looking at it. Really, we just got to know that you're turning it in on a conventional thread. So you're turning it clockwise in towards the flywheel to restore your adjustment at your half inch. So if you want to tighten it up, you're turning the adjusting ring into the flywheel. If you want to increase your half inch, you're turning that adjusting ring out away from the flywheel. So that's sort of the adjustment in a nutshell, looking at this adjusting bolt that's right there and making that adjustment to bring it back in. Hopefully this explains enough of those pieces that we can sort of put uh, everything into proper place in our heads.